afternoon, good evening and good night. Welcome back to Abstract Medicine. I hope you're all doing well and uh, I hope that you've been having a wonderful transition into this new moon energy, Pluto being in Aquarius now, uh, Pisces and Saturn uh, marrying uh, the new astrological year and Ramadan as well. There's a lot of a lot of solar flares as well i'm hearing in the community lots of changes that are taking place just moving because the sun is, is quite strong and it's really interesting because i'm i'm just about to do a reading on jesus and mary magdalene so the sun is very strong his light is incredibly strong and bright today and the last few days it's been raining heavily and just as i was setting up briefly i placed the the eye um, here on the table and I just sensed his energy saying you don't need this <laughs> you don't need this so um, I was also had this feeling I was also guided to do this video with my face in front um, I think maybe for the reasons that I haven't done it in a long time I haven't shown you my face here on YouTube and it's obviously not a vanity project it's not a vanity thing it's me being upfront and being visible and crystal clear, essentially, uh, with the messages that are coming through. There's no hiding, it's the energy of no hiding. So already I'm starting to sense um, his energy, his channeling uh, coming through. And to be honest, I've been sensing this feeling the last two weeks about doing a video on the twin flame energy between Mary Magdalene and Jesus the Christ. Um, so the Christ energy, Christ means um, saviour. It doesn't necessarily mean that he is the ultimate and the only saviour. So please do not click off. For those of you who have a really religious um, predispos predisposition, then this is probably not the video that you need to hear. And for some reason, also, this isn't the place. Um, if you are interested in other and other methods of um, seeing the world outside of dogma, then it's interesting how you clicked on this video in the first place is what I'm sensing. But uh, yeah, so basically, um, there are many ways to get to him, there are many ways to find truth, there are many ways to find God. And many individuals, many prophets had found uh, God had um, alchemized the, um, the Christ energy, um, in many different ways. And it wasn't just Jesus. Um, many include uh, Muhammad, the prophet, um, Buddha, um, many, many, many people that you may even be surprised by as well. Um, now, in order to, uh, just a side note before I begin, in order to find the Christ within you, you have to basically um, experience and understand and come into your own self-realisation. So men and women have experienced that in history, in the timelines of history, including Mary Magdalene, including Jesus. And <laughs> I'm just having an inner dialogue with Jesus at the same time that he's saying that I am coming into that self-realisation myself. And I'm also seeing 3-3 three, three on the clock, which is no surprise because that is his energy. The reason why I'm bringing in Jesus and Mary Magdalene is because Jesus and I are very, very close. I have a very strong connection with him because of the experiences that I've had, um, spiritually speaking. So there could be some activity taking place um, around me that you may be seeing. You may be seeing orbs or I don't know. I get the sense that there's going to be a little bit of activity and possibly potentially I'm not sure, but potentially a little bit of disturbance somehow um, because the portal is really open for this channeling. And um, he also wants me to say that um, I'm not using any cards, as you can tell, I've just got a cup of coffee, <laughs> um, is that um, there are exactly there are many different roads, there are many different paths to find one's kingdom to find truth to find god and what we've been taught in the christian context um is wrong it's 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 also irrelevant to today um today's teachings today's understanding of the world we have to be up to date with how things change and how things evolve okay 
Now, I have two candles lit today. I've just got two white candles, one for Mary Magdalene and one for Jesus Christ. I actually do have a Jesus deck, um, Loving Words by Jesus by Doreen Virtue. Um, and the message with that, you know, as much as I had had and still continue, of course, to love Doreen Virtue and her, you know, um, her her bringing in so many people into the spiritual community into into tarot reading and oracle readings and angel therapy um she did go into a, a very dogmatic path afterwards um but the energy that was channeled um and is embodied i'm hearing um in the in the tarot decks that she had created i just saw crow just coming through so the messages are clear um, and the oracle cards are true. So the energy that is instilled there is still true. Um, so I had a bit of resistance doing this video um, because because of people, I have to say, because of people's ignorance um, with regards to Jesus. And it's not because I'm a holier than thou energy. It's not because I'm better than. It's not because I, I just... I obviously I have my own understanding and I have my own path and I have my own awareness of things but the reason why I created abstract medicine is so that we could talk about these things originally abstract medicine was a place where you know we would have discussions and talk about um race and culture and I I saw originally in 2020 when I launched abstract medicine on Instagram mainly at the beginning um, there starts to be a, a lot of backlash about the things that I was saying and it's because certain people weren't able to meet me in my frequency and my understanding of the world and I'm not here to say that this is the only way but I, because of the experiences that I've had and because of its alignment with many other great teachers um, that have also spoken about the same things I have to say that it is more close to the truth than the truth that we have been presented by um, in our society in the West, particularly with um, what Jesus looked like, uh, what he said, what has been written in the Bible. There are many Bibles. There's also the Bible of Mary Magdalene. Um, there's also the Bible of Enoch as well. The, the, the sacred texts of Enoch, who was the great, 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 great grandfather of Jesus. Um, and he spoke about you know, things that many people um, at the time in the patriarchal energy um, at the time were not wanting to share to the world because people weren't prepared for it. And I honestly think that now people are prepared for the truth. I think people are wanting to find out more. I think people are rebelling against certain institutions. I mean, look at the look at the police, you know, the Metropolitan Police here in England um, being, you know, having been discovered to have been so corrupt and have been corroborating on horrific crimes against women, uh, xenophobic uh, violences as well, um, as well as homophobic um, attacks uh, inside the institution that have been incredibly, you know, horrifying for the public to hear. So and then, of course, with things that have been going on in the Vatican and in the in the religious institutions, I'm hearing just generally speaking, and even in the care of children, even in um, hospices uh, for the elderly um, and uh, adoption clinics. So, you know, what I'm sensing just universally, just generally speaking, before I tune into, well, I'm already tuning into their energy, Jesus and Mary Magdalene's energy, but this is a conversation and this is the conversation that we have as disciples basically, um, of the truth. We have a conversation, we, we talk about these things and we allow other people to have their opinion. We allow others to um, communicate uh, freely and to respect other people's um, understanding, experiences of the world. And we understand that not everyone is on the same level, but there is a truth out there and there is a truth out uh, within ourselves as well that we get to, we get to honour and we get to be sovereign in. And that is part of the path. Um, this is channeling. Everything I'm saying is pure channeling, OK? This is part of the path of enlightenment and this is part of the path of truth. However you wish to call it, enlightenment, truth, um, alchemizing the philosopher's stone, which is the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, which is 
created within us. You know, if you go into the teachings of the Gnostic texts, this is part of the fluids within our own pineal, 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 I can't even say the word, um, system. And it's in our, it's in our heads. <laughs> Honestly, there's a pineal system here. There's a pineal gland and there's a tr triad essentially between the, I won't tell you everything because not everyone is prepared to, um, to, uh, to accept, to accept, uh, these fruits of knowledge I'm hearing. Um, but I will give you hints and I've been giving you hints from the very beginning, <laughs> uh, since 2020. Okay. Um, and the temple is within us. You know, we don't have to go to church necessarily to find God. We don't have to go to the temple to find truth and God. We don't have to be showing that we are putting money into the coffers to show that we are charitable, benevolent, uh, philanthropic. Um, just be, just be and be sovereign, be sovereign in your truth and honor your path. Now, I, 11, 11 on the clock here, no surprise. So the twin flame journey is starts with the beginning of finding your own truth, your own, um, your own truth, essentially. And how you find your own truth is maybe through obstacles, um, through experiences, uh, through communication, through changes, through sudden, scary, awakening situations. Um, but how I, how I came into the path of the Christ energy, my, my Christ consciousness awareness and my Christ consciousness awakening happened when I was 33. And it happened from Good Friday to Easter Monday. And the experience I was experiencing wasn't just only the Christ consciousness awareness and awakening, but it was also the Kundalini awakening that I'd experienced at the same time. Not only that, I'd also experienced, um, I had also experienced, um, uh, well, I don't know why I'm finding it difficult to say this. Um, it's two, two, two on the clock there. I'd also experienced um, alien abduction, on two occasions during that weekend as well. Um, there was also a serpent involved as well, which is part of the Kundalini awakening, which was missing. A, a proper snake was missing in the household that I was staying in. And there was a boa constrictor. <laughs> no, it was a Colombian boa um, constrictor. And it was a baby. I think it must have been like three or four years old. Well, not a baby, but anyway, pretty big. And it was missing and the person that I was staying with um, had lost it, had also had been missing for two weeks. This is in the middle of the Redwoods in North California and they sold their tank for the, you know, the boa and it was done. Like they had, they had said goodbye to the boa essentially. And as I was going through my experiences of the Kundalini awakening, I had, I don't have to tell you all of it. Spirit, Jesus is saying, I don't have to tell you the whole experience. Um, but essentially what happened is, is that by Monday I had come across the snake and the snake was encoiled around these books on the bookshelf. There was a corridor between my habitation, the place I was, uh, you know, sleeping and the main house. And so to get to the main house, you have to walk through this small corridor and this small corridor had these books. And of course, all the books that were there were all esoteric. So these books were like, you know, Aldous Huxley, uh, uh, Brave New World, um, you know, like Carl Jung, like all of those kind of really interesting psycho psychoanalysis and psychological and uh, dystopic books. This, this snake, and there was a she, the snake is a fe female, she was coiled around these books. I didn't see her head, it was just the body. And of course, um, she was there the whole time. She was close to my 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 bedroom um than the main house and of course i was experienced the kundalini awakening which is the rise of the serpent that starts from the bottom of the um bottom of the tail of the spinal cord up through and it goes up through uh, the spinal column and then through out into the uh, third eye which is where a lot of prof a lot of um pharaohs in ancient egypt had this sculpture with the you know with the snake the snake there because they were showing that they were awakened and they were in contact and they were essentially gods 
they were in contact with God and they were gods themselves. Um, and so the Kundalini awakening is, um, so she was my teacher, um, but the Kundalini awakening um, is essentially the path of truth and knowledge to the white lodge, which is truth, uh, the, the, the true white magic. Okay, 1515, 15. so many synchronicities in this in the uh, clocks and the numbers and numerology. No surprise. Um, okay, now I'm going to move on to the next topic that they, that they want to channel. They want me to channel is, um, and it's interesting because I'm just about to talk about a dark topic and it's just got dark as you can see. Um, many people in certain music industries and in certain sects and sects in certain cultures in certain group activities um find the path of enlightenment um quickly on the short path with the black candle um with dark magic and for them this is the distorted um kundalini essentially where the where the um the true gem, the true crystallization, the true um, path to the Philosopher's Stone, the true path to the Christ consciousness energy. Um, rather than finding sovereignty within oneself, um, the path is easier to find it with and through other methods outside of oneself, which is not the way, capital T, capital W. So the the basically the... the there's this dark fluid, the dark energy goes fr down into down the spinal column, down the spinal, um, it's basically spinal fluid, which is what Jesus was talking about when he was speaking about his awakening. Down the spinal column, spinal fluid goes downwards and then essentially, and look, can you see how the shadow of the, of the, of the window frame is like right here? Interesting. Um, goes down and, um, and ends up being the tail, the tail of this of the tail of the devil, you know, with the spinal column, the spinal tail. <laughs> um, and so their light is shadow. It's the opposite of true awakening and it's distorted. And a lot of us have fallen. Um, a lot of us have fallen into the dark arts. A lot of us have fallen into I say us because we have free will. A lot of us have fallen into um, satanic worship to um the vivifying i'm hearing of gods and false gods now vivif vivification is also the practice of awakening or forced awakening or forced um forced healing forced truth um forced magic onto beings that are not requesting that to take place now this includes babies this includes children this includes a lot of um trafficking of individuals um who are not ready to be to be initiated um because they are not of mature age okay i'll just say it in that way so a lot of these groups um and cults i have to say are groups and cults that we honor that we respect and that we have um we have a lot of uh adoration for this has now become the new church music industry the arts industry um in politics um people of governance they all practice the dark arts the majority of them i wouldn't i don't say all of them but the majority of them do practice the dark arts um and it's always the case um when someone has money what do they want they want more money when someone has already a lot of power what do they want they want more power so um there's also this heavy um, I don't want to say agnosticism, but this heavy um, atheist approach um, where by saying that they do not believe in God, they are then permitted or they feel like they are permitted to do certain evil acts and evil deeds because they feel and they believe and they think that all these acts and deeds are unnoticed. But when in truth, they are noticed and the judgment is some the judgment portal is already there and open for them when they 
when they pass it. And it's not a question of choice, it's a question of time. So a lot of these people are going through either a judgment process now, or they will be going through the judgment portal. Now, the God that I believe in, God, the universal God, is not someone who is a punisher. Um, he He's kind of like a big old lawyer. And he, him, he is like a lawyer in the sense that, you know, these are the facts, these are the truths, this is how it goes, you know? So when you have when you take action towards something, there's a cause and a consequence to that action, whether it's good or bad or ugly, okay? So um, that's also something I want to say. 2020 on the clock here. Okay, so um, Jesus, could you come in, please? Okay, so he wants me to use these these decks. So I have the new decks uh, that have arrived for abstract medicine, specifically for abstract medicine, always. Um, I bought some new... Mer not merch but products and tarot cards and oracle cards that i feel um really uh like you lot would love <laughs> basically um so we have the sacred geometry um oracle oracle um cards okay so jesus what it, which card would you like us to talk to share for the um twin flame journey so so going back to the Twin Flame journey, um, it starts with finding truth within, um, first and foremost. It starts with finding truth within, first and foremost. And once we find the truth within, we start to walk on the path of true light and enlightenment. I can't even tell you, I wish I could show you all of the mirrored numbers that I'm seeing on the clock. Uh, 2121 is also what I saw earlier. I saw 222 as well um, and some other mirrored numbers and repetitive repeating numbers too but I see that there is um that there are a lot of people who are intrigued about the twin flame journey the true love match journey and um there are ideas about that in the community um or in the greater culture at large where one awakens first and then the other one does there's a runner and a chaser energy there's one that runs at the time of this reading right now um you could probably see it maybe even on the um on the time scroll it's 2209 or 2210 and 2211 now 2212 so 22 is the number of truth for, for me at least is my understanding of not just my truth of the twin lane twin flame energy or the twin flame lane i'm hearing it's number 22 universally um the energy of true love, the energy of balance, the energy of recognition of, of a twin soul, essentially. So um, Mary Magdalene was married to Jesus. Um, shock, horror, <laughs> news. <laughs> I've just woken you up just now by saying that she was married to him and they had children. And he lived to tell many tales after the crucifixion uh, in real life, in the physical form. Um and she was his disciple and um <laughs> he's not saying he's saying he's not saying that I, I you shouldn't have favorites but he's saying she was my favorite in the sense that she was his twin soul okay she was his um true love true love now mary magdalene has come through in other channeled videos with mother mary um I think I'll talk about that another day about um, about the conception of Jesus through Mary. I'll talk about that another day. Um, but yes, so. So I'm just I'm just having a conversation. OK, so I have this ring here. I have this ring and it's I've had this ring and I bought this from the Astro astrology center or the astrology shop on Neil Neil is it Neil Street in Covent Garden and I've had this since I was a kid a baby like I've had this ring since I was like uh 13 or 12 or 13 it's a holographic ring and it's a sun and a moon and so what he's saying is that one one is the sun and one is the moon okay one is the sun and one is the moon in this in this dynamic um, they are opposites. So the connection of the two lovers, the true love energies, one is a, 
one is the, the sun and one is the moon one is the masculine and one is the feminine and they work around each other they complement each other okay i love this card i love this card this is very jesus energy and the card says compassion okay you can see that here it says compassion right there yeah have a look at this this card meditate over it if you want to take a screenshot you could do that now as well it might be a good idea so the energy of compassion here okay number 15 now number 15 is the energy of uh of the devil here which i have on my cheat sheet here which is interesting control your desires rather than letting you control letting them control you so the frequency of compassion supports our ability to stand by others without judgment and be the divine mediator between heaven and earth <clears throat> spirit and matter so that <clears throat> unconditional love can flow from source through our heart and into the world excuse me so um excuse me i i i feel like yeah <laughs> There's a blockage here in the throat chakra, by the way. Uh, it's not my energy. I don't think it's my energy. I usually have quite a clear throat. <laughs> um, but yeah, the energy of compassion here. There's someone who wants to communicate, basically. Um, there is compassion between both individuals. Now, my right ear is now stinging. It's not even like twinging. It's actually stinging. So it's the masculine it's the masculine that is wanting to um communicate and sh and have compassion for their own heart and to communicate their truth okay so have a look at the immunology deck jesus let's have a look and see and mary magdalene what is it that you okay they want to start with jesus first okay so jesus using the immunology deck you've seen the immunology deck here on abstract medicine i'm going to show you the other decks soon um, that we have a fiery climax approach is full moon in Aries, which is very masculine energy, this card here. And we have entered the <clears throat> Aries season. So happy birthday to my Aries energies. <laughs> happy birthday to my Aries. Um, masculine energy, the fiery climax approaching and the full moon is about completion. So I feel here that the masculine is um, going to completing a cycle of releasing the old, releasing judgment, releasing uh, maybe even toxic energies. I just heard toxic waste, toxic people that have been a waste of his time. I'll just say his um, just for, you know, just uh, just an easy way of saying it regardless of gender though um so yeah i see here that there's this there is a um a climax approaching a completion approaching um there's also the energy of like virility here with the um with this aries energy and also the energy of a lot of sexuality uh, in particular for the masculine now we have for the female i feel like it's the bull here with the new moon in taurus so we have full and new so we have uh, prosperity lies ahead okay so Taurus energy is Venus. Amazing. I love it how this, I love how spirit works through me, through the cards as well. Taurus is, is ruled by Venus and um, Mars is ruled, Aries is ruled by Mars here. Okay, so there is a climax approaching. There is going to be, um, I'm just going to put the cards here. You won't be able to see them, but I'm just placing them in a certain way so that I'm able to read the, the information better. There is a, there is a completion happening in the masculine's, energy and in the masculine's world at this time and um there is a lot of desire a lot of passion a lot of excitement from the masculine side towards the the, the feminine essentially now the divine feminine um energy is in on a new cycle already she's on the new path because she's already experienced awakenings and there are many awakenings by the way and many awakening stages she is on the new path of um, prosperity, of um, her career changing. Her, her, I say her, regardless of gender, you can be a man while, while still having the divine feminine energy, as you know, and vice versa. So please take it as it resonates. Please take the whole video. Please take all of my videos as they resonate. And if they don't resonate with you, click off or move on to another video or go to another reader. OK, I, I'm not here to be so politically correct that everyone's going to be like, OK, with what I'm saying. You may be triggered and you probably will and probably have been very triggered with all of the readings that I've sent throughout the years. Um, but I'm here for a reason. And there's a reason why 
you you appreciate the channelings and you appreciate the bookings as well and the healing services too um, because spirit has things to say and I'm a channel and spirit comes through me with the messages that need to be delivered and declared so the uh the bull energy of Taurus is of course the energy of stubborn action <laughs> stubborn energy too knowing one's worth the energy of Taurus is knowing one's worth the energy of Taurus is also luxury goods uh feeling pampered feeling uh praised I'm also seeing the feminine energy the divine empress energy the divine feminine being you know worshipped essentially so she's on this path of kind of just self-assurance self-acceptance I mean if you look at the bull and how she's looking it's it's the energy of just like self-respect her head is high it's turned to the side a little bit she's she's moving on to the future okay whereas the masculine is like eyes straight towards their desire straight towards the feminine as you can see here they are strongly focused on the feminine energy they are strongly focused on completing cycles and and going towards their goals high achievers too um so we have mars and venus energy which is embodied here okay so the main the main message is compassion between both you know having compassion um between both and um between both energies i want to have another oracle card please spirit for the energies between both the twin flames masculine and feminine energies please yeah there's the third eye chakra here so the activation that is taking place is compassion between both individuals um but also the the communication that is taking place on a psychic psychic level now with these solar storms that are taking place um I actually experienced a time leap recently, um, which was interesting by two days. I didn't even, I wasn't aware of it until like 10 in the morning yesterday. So the frequency of the third eye chakra, the indigo flower of life supports our intuition and our inner knowing, our imagination and our psychic powers. So a lot of you who are on the twin flame journey have this activation of the psychic communication that you're both experiencing at this time. I feel like particularly it's the masculine who's communicating to the feminine and she is the one who's receiving the information. So you have the colour green and the colour purple or indigo here. We have number six, which is the energy of divine love and balance as well. I also just want to have a look at something, I want to refer to something too. The number six is also the um, number associated with planet Jupiter and Jupiter is a good luck charm planet. Um, it's about expansion. It's about great fortune. Um, Jupiter classically in astrology is rule rules Pisces. Um, but let's say in modern times, uh, Jupiter is um, signif signified by Sagittarius energy. So we have this energy of um travel possibly maybe the masculine is wanting to travel towards um the feminine i'm also saying because of the psychic communication it doesn't matter it's string theory you know psychic communication travels over time space it doesn't matter um that's just a side note for those of you who are really into physics okay so i'm going to take my my jump rock because it's actually quite warm here by the sun you know the masculine energy because uh because the um the sun is like it doesn't matter where you are in the northern hemisphere you know spring is here or start out is here the energy of spring and new life and and uh new opportunities and new births is already here isn't it but it's it doesn't matter if it's cold outside but the sun is so strong right now in my ear oh my gosh um Jesus is really here speaking to me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Um, also owning. The other energy here is about owning the sun in the sense of owning your truth, owning what is glaringly obvious in your belief system, like owning that you believe in what you believe in and not to shy away from it and not to allow other people's opinions to or 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 perceptions of the world I just heard incriminate you or put you in a situation that you feel ashamed about either 
um, is what I'm hearing. I'm also hearing, um, I'm also hearing for those of you who believe in Jesus, declare it and say it. You don't have to say it in a kind of like evangelical way. Just say that you believe. Say that if you believe in Muhammad as well, believe and say it. But like how you how you intend to say things, how you say things is so important. Now, there's something else here that's coming through. Hi, crow. <laughs> just saw this crow just like fly over. Um, one day I'll show you my window and then you can see all the activity. Now, it's quite quite bright here so I'm probably um coming in as sort of like a shadow light here um one second so I can just it's just because it's it's just because it's very very bright here but it's okay so um the other thing is yeah it's just to you know really hold sovereign and this is something that um if you want to follow her she's she's a great teacher and a great mentor as well I've been following her for a long time her name is Amanda Ellis Amanda Ellis, she's also uh, based in England and she speaks about this. She has a very strong connection with Archangel Metatron and um, he was like channeling, he was channeling through her and he was like, you know, you've just got to own the name. You've got to own who you believe in. You've got to own that, not own is in possession, but own that truth, you know own um your name as well you know so my name just a side note story time <laughs> this is all story time though to be honest uh you know my name i'm just gonna do this because i can't actually see <laughs> um my name is cristalina and it's taken a lot of people a lot of time for people to really appreciate and even accept the fact that my name has changed now i've always been cristalina i've always been cristalina but i didn't know i was and i believe that this is this is my this is my spiritual name now a lot of us that go through um spiritual awakenings as well and i've experienced one recently in december the dark night of the soul um you know is <sighs> You know, we 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 receive we receive our our goddess name. We receive our spiritual name, you know, or our god name. And my name is Cristalina, and I was I was I wasn't baptized. I was baptized actually. I was baptized as Cristal. Now, the way that my dad um, asked for the name to be spelt was with a Y. And of course, everyone in England called me Crystal, which is not my name. It's not my resonance. It's not the frequency of who I am. It's not my energy. And so, imagine going through school. Being trilingual, Spanish, Italian are my two languages as well as English and conversational French. But having those romantic romance, <laughs> Roman languages even, and having a name that that on paper looks, um, you know, English, um, that is pronounced in a Latin way. You know, it really fucks with your brain, to be honest. And I have to say it in that way because it. it it's horrible like it's horrible I'm not I don't want to be a victim but I'm just saying that it's horrible to experience that when people are forcing an identity on you that you're not you know your name is everything your name is everything it's who you are it's what you believe in your name is your god-given um path as well it it puts you on the path to who you are you know people don't believe in names anymore they just say oh it sounds pretty it sounds nice it sounds really strong it sounds really majestic but do you actually know the meaning of your name and that's what spirit is coming in today to say is know your name and own your name know who you are and i wanted to have an italianized or latin or spanish sounding name you know and I never really resonated with the name Cristal. I just never resonated with it. It was it was always like, again, like, no, it's not this. It's actually this because and I had to like explain how it was. And it was just really it was really annoying. It was really hard work. Now, imagine changing your name at the height of your career. OK, and it basically changing your whole brand. Um, and people that search your name online on the Internet remembered you for something else another name and now you're this new name and so that also changes things in the algorithms of your you know people searching for who you are as well and so not only had I shared so much not only had I gone through a dark night of the soul not only had I gone through you know emotional heartbreak you know not only had I gone through you know 
me leaving a, gal a gallery that was incredibly toxic and not making any money for months, you know, going through a personal pandemic, I'm not here as a victim, I'm showing and sharing with you that I, I am experiencing the same and similar things that you are. Um, and then changing your name as well, because that's really who you feel is who you are. And uh, and then people still want to call you something else. People that you've known for so long, they, they want to continue calling you the name that you were born. So basically, with I was I was reborn. I was reborn um, a few months ago uh, through spirit, and hence my name change. Hence hence me getting my tatao, you know, sacred tatao, my arms, which I won't show you necessarily. They're there, but they they mean obviously. To me they mean a lot to me and they obviously are of a highly spiritual nature and they were activations of um spiritual ceremony as well that had taken place for me so own who you are is what i'm saying and so when you own who you are you're also on the path to um to the one to the universal truth to the one also the one is also your true love as well. Not everyone is on the twin flame journey, by the way. <laughs> okay, and underneath that we have new moon and Gemini. Communication is key. So again, that's also relevant too. So we have Aries energy, Taurus energy, and Gemini energy in particular. I did also mention Sagittarius and Pisces. Um, and we have communication as key. So there is, and we have the twin energy here, no surprise where there is a need and a desire to communicate here, okay? So, deck number one for abstract medicine, we have the Shaman's, the Shaman's Dream Oracle. Okay, so I, I chose this deck for all of you, um, for abstract medicine, because I'm a shaman, and I thought it would be cool to show you and use this deck. So this deck in the opening says, we are all sacred dreamers dreaming the world into being. Okay, so beautiful energy. Now, this deck is by Alberto Viloldo and Colette Baron reed okay, I really like her decks as well. I actually didn't have any of her decks apart from this one. I had a deck on as an app um, by Colette Baron reed and just the energy that she has is great. Okay, so beautiful. At the back, we have these gorgeous um, images. Okay, so... Now, it's no surprise the feminine energy, Mary Magdalene's energy is quite reserved and it's quite, it's observing. It's an observant energy. The masculine energy is usually always more prominent. But the interesting thing is, interesting thing is that the twin flame journey, the feminine's energy is more prominent. It's felt more strongly and the masculine energy is felt um sort of more withdrawn um because there is a runner chaser dynamic essentially okay so jesus what are the messages for the twin flames twin flames at this time please and now so one of the thing is with number 15 is compassion and we have number six the third eye chakra so 15, add, you know, rounds down to a number six, you know, and then we have number six as the third eye chakra indeed. So this energy of balance as well. There's also this um, number six is connected to number nine and everything starts at the beginning. Number nine is the energy of here, yeah, um, essentially the root chakra. So everything starts at the beginning. Everything starts from conception. Everything starts from an intent, an intention here. Let me have a look at the um, Kabbalistic Sephora, uh, Sephiroth. Uh, number nine is the energy of Neptune. So now in today's society, we understand Neptune to be Pisces. So there have been a, some illusions of self. You know, the, the root chakra is knowing who you are, knowing yourself. Like, you know, so the masculine is saying uh, repairing the veil and is asking for forgiveness here which is beautiful and we have 45 here could be someone's age we have 45 which rounds down to a number nine so no no surprise here there are no no coincidences on my channel um we have number nine here 45 and we have forgiveness so the masculine is wanting forgiveness the masculine is wanting to repair uh repairing the veil for me in this card is also repairing the 
um, the illusion, the illusion that they are doing really well without you, the illusion that uh, they don't necessarily um, believe in the connection they do, uh, in the true love connection, the twin flame connection they do, and repairing the possible separation between you both too. Um, I'm also seeing this staff and this kind of like wrapping of a ribbon that turns into a bow and this butterfly which is obviously symbolic of transformation so the masculine has been going through immense transformative energies they've been transforming their life they've been transforming how they see the world as well thanks to you feminines i'm hearing thanks to you and i'm also seeing that their staff their spinal column they are they are people who have direction they are masculines who um have a strong backbone um they're also people who now um are not allowing others to manipulate them take advantage of them i'm hearing too so let's have a look at 45 you know it's the energy of uh, spring as well and sunlight here we have poppies uh which are you know symbolic of 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 the drug heroin as well, I have to say, and they see you as a heroine, they see you as a, a guiding light. Okay, they see you as a guiding light. Now, repairing the veil. Okay, let me just show you this card, if you can see it. <laughs> um, forgiveness, making amends, recognition of our unity. Okay, recognition of our unity. Between us, all is a thin veil appearing to be a space that separates us <laughs> we look through this veil and believe ourselves to be distinct from each other we assume that our thoughts and feelings are our own we see bodies and objects and the spaces between them so we engage the world in a relationship between a duality of us and them the veil serves as a mysterious illusion making it so hard to believe in our in our inherent connection and unity we can't always remember that what we do to someone else we at the same time do it to ourselves when we claw at the veil out of fear anger jealousy or resentment manipulate another misuse our power or allow someone's actions to diminish us we create a wound felt by many not just those of us in the smaller direct relationship now is the time to examine where your actions have caused difficulty or harm to someone else and also where you have been the recipient of harm. Regardless of what side you are on, it's important to take responsibility for healing the rift by bringing love, compassion, which we had here, compassion, uh, deep listening and presence to whatever is not in harmony. Do this for you and for your own liberty as you become an unwitting hostage uh, once you take the role of perpetrator or victim, both positions of weakness, let go of all your resentment, know your part in the dynamic and make the appropriate amends with that newfound wisdom and understanding, healing, forgiveness and mending. What is broken to your world is a sweet, much needed declaration of freedom. So there's quite a lot to unpack here, but I will say that the masculine is wanting to repair the separation between you both. Um, they also want unity because a fiery climax approaches they want to um th basically this desire and passion is building up because they want communication and this this is that this is why this card came through is communication is key and that's what's of important now they may have been in hermit mode they may have been hiding they may have been pretending etc etc there's also this energy that they want your forgiveness they're asking for your forgiveness divine feminines and um they want to bridge the gap between you and them they want you to be one unit okay so a lot of you are coming into unions at this time and i feel like the aries energy the aries season is going to be very symbolic of that full moon in aries is actually happening at the end of the month which is interesting as we started the new we started the um new astrological year with aries and with Aries being the new moon, we start with Aries and new moon and we end with Aries in the um, full moon as well, which is interesting how this has come out too in the cards. Um, they are also um, releasing fear, releasing anger and possible jealousy as well that they may have 
about you maybe you're receiving a lot of attention divine feminines you're you're coming across as very enigmatic very beautiful very attractive with this venusian energy very all eyes on you very goddess energy here and uh, they want to bring compassion they want you to listen to what they have to say because communication is key that card is coming through with communication and they want harmony okay so beautiful let's have a look at the divine feminine energy here what is mother what is mary magdalene wanting to say for the divine feminines as a guide well they're saying that divine feminines you can pray on her you can ask for her help okay you can ask for her help um divine feminines um and see her as a goddess of light so we have two cards for her okay so we have uh the first card is the eyes of the eagle rising above the fray and number 18 here okay so number 18 is the um, moon card which is all about um you know illusions um but also clarity coming through as well and rising above and out of the fog so we have this rising above the fray the divine feminines are really in their power and their career there's a lot of abundance coming their way for divine feminines because they put a lot of work into it taurus energy is about hard work as well okay so we have number 18 which rounds down to a nine again beautiful new beginnings here new starts um air energy for some as well um there are cut above the rest is what i'm seeing here divine feminines and we have number eight which is interesting we have the crown crown games right use of power okay we have a dragonfly here which could also be symbolic okay so we have a crown and we have this energy of um the divine feminines also being crowned for their hard work but also not just at work in their career but also um through the hard work that they've been putting in internally emotionally spiritually okay crown games okay so let's have a look at the um e eyes of the eagle number 18 So Divine Feminines, Mary Magdalene is saying there is protection around the feminine at this time and always. Inherent trust, protection, rising above the fray. The eyes of the eagle offers you the gift of foresight, the skills of looking ahead, to see the unfolding of destiny before it all manifests as reality. The eagle's extraordinary vision allows it to spot the tiny mouse from its lofty perspective as it flies thousands of feet into the atmosphere. In a similar fashion, you too can train your keen eye to discern the workings of humans. Eyes of the Eagle is an invitation to witness the good, the bad, the ugly and the beautiful, yet react to nothing. Act only to further your noblest calling. The Eagle flies above all creatures when it meets obstacles. It simply rises above them. Know that you are protected. You can fly high above the judgment slings and arrows and the darts of envy from others who may not have your great wings and are still arguing with the pigeons over crumbs. Trust that you are ready for whatever fortune has placed before you. As we say, as we said here, prosperity lies ahead. So trust that you are ready for whatever fortune has placed before you, even if you feel not yet properly equipped to meet its challenges. Your willingness to say yes to spirit has nothing to do with how well outfitted you are. Hesitating, on the other hand, will suck the air from under your wings and make you lose altitude. You're called now to trust your heart and your instincts to move fearlessly and not waver. OK. The time is right and no harm can come your way if your motives are pure and you act courageously. So Divine Feminine's Mother Mary is saying that at this time, your focus is about knowing your worth continuing to know your worth and knowing that you are apt and equipped to um to rise above any challenges jealousy and judgment of others as you have an all well-rounded um perspective on life just generally speaking uh, without judgment okay um there was also something else here um yes that you rise above the darts of envy in in particular as well Okay, beautiful. Let's have a look at the um, crown games number eight. Okay, so number eight in the tarot is the energy of strength. It's about being graceful. It's about flying gracefully above, um, but not feeling like you are above anyone, but actually just having kind of a 
energy of detachment, I would say, and an energy of detachment too. And to not hesitate or doubt your abilities, whatever they may be. Do not do not doubt uh, your foresight in things. A lot of you are also being awakened into uh, clairvoyance. Mother Mary is saying that she also had the gift of clairvoyance as well. She could see she could see people's actions before they took place. Um, and a lot of these actions she had warned Jesus about as well is what I'm hearing. So the crown games, also the crown chakra energy here. So leadership, responsibility, accountability, right use of power. OK, so there is a game of power played by all people, whether they are conscious of it or not. It concerns who has it and who doesn't, how to get more of it and not to lose that which you have how to wield it wisely and not to get drunk with it and cause harm. These are the matters you need to ponder now that you find yourself in the crown game too. You want to be on top, the best of divine feminines, the most effective, the most beloved. You may discover that your deep desire to help others is distinguishing, sorry, you may discover that your deep desire to help others is disguising the underpinnings of this complex game. Power and all its en and all it entails can be both dangerous and productive, destructive and redemptive. Which will it be for you? Can you forgive without condoning and keep your dignity when challenged? Will you be accountable, amenable to change or making amends? Can you let go of your need to, to rescue others? Big one, Divine Feminines. Can you let go of your need to rescue others? Lead with humility while letting others discover their way home now you're learning that empowerment comes with a price and a sacrifice for sovereignty um, this is the time to pick your battles use strategy and temper your reactions you have the power to make a beautiful difference on behalf of others can you see power as currency that you must spend judici judiciously true power is stewarded wisely for it is given from the divine not from the ego in all your relations, the greatest beauty is when power is shared. If you are in higher position, if you are in a higher position, it's even more important to be kind and respectful. Ask for forgiveness. It will come when you choose compassion. There's that word again. Compassion of your own goals and desires. When you stop caring about who wears the crown, true success and influence appears for you. OK, so again, a lot of messages uh, are in this. Um, reading about compassion about um the energy of ego remember i spoke about the very beginning about certain cults and groups and institutions and you know creative environments and governance use the ego use distorted power not from the divine truth and light through the fallen the fallen en energies of uh wanting of wanting, of desire, of lust, of ego, of uh, coming from a place of uh, jealousy, coming a, uh, from a place of coveting. Now, this is another message here, Divine Feminines, that you may be, I don't want to say t tempted or tricked, but you may be experiencing a lesson right now where just like Mother Mary, why don't I say Mother? Just like Mary Magdalene, because she's around, obviously. <laughs> she's she's the mum of Jesus. Of course, she's going to be around. It's the energy of the mother over overseeing their child. Um, so, it, the energy of um, the divine feminine is um, making sure that they are not going to be um, dissuaded or become part of the system. Now, Mary Magdalene had and has still not she was cancelled out of the bible essentially of of being seen as 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 um as jesus's wife um and there's this sweet little kind of like metaphoric story about jesus turning the um uh turning water into wine okay um at a wedding and it was his wedding and the water into wine is actually a very tantric <laughs> okay tantric exercise okay so it's not just literal it's a tantric exercise okay so um even st even then mary magdalene still 
chose divinity rather than ego for having not for not having been um appreciated essentially appreciated and i have to say it's bullshit like the whole thing is bullshit that she wasn't appreciated that she wasn't seen she was seen as dangerous because she was a disciple and she was a woman she was an advisor as well you know i think all of this is changing now this is changing for um in our society that the right people get to be seen the right women get to be seen and appreciated the divine feminine energy the matriarchy is coming in tr true and strongly now as we are now in the kala yuga energies of great change essentially and um the illusion is being broken down and there is a great shift that's taking place now with pluto and aquarius and this hasn't this this um let's say marrying of Pluto and Aquarius has not taken place since 1770s, year 1770s. So it's been a long, long time for great change. Um, so that's also symbolic here. OK, so what else do you both want to say today other than the messages that have come through? We're going to use the good tarot now. OK, we're going to use a good tarot. So the Good Tarot is also by Colette Baron reed another deck for abstract medicine. Yay! <laughs> okay. Now this is a tarot deck, it's not an oracle deck, but it's a tarot deck. I'm just going to shuffle. The eagle is going to be significant for some of you as well. Um, what are what are the unifying energies between both? Actually, let's have a look. Sorry, let's have a look at what spirit. Generally speaking, what? Let's start with the feminine. No, what, let's start with the masculine because the masculine is the active. Um, particularly at this time in the action orientated energy and the feminine is a recessive, the recipient energy. So both, what I'm seeing here is that both energies, divine feminine and divine masculine, are now in their pure, sovereign, alchemized archetype selves. Okay, so divine feminine is, that is in alignment and is true to their divine feminine, femininity and the divine masculine is true in their divine masculine um, archetype and masculinity, which is interesting because at the very beginning I spoke about the Christ energy. I'm hearing the words how how far they have fallen. So I don't know what that's about, but okay. So for those, okay, yeah, there's, a, there's an energy of um, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So that's something I read about recently where um, there are a lot of people who believe themselves to be mystics, believe themselves to be um, light workers, uh, good witches, um, prophets, wizards, whatever you want to call it, who work with the light, but actually they are their intention is possibly is veiled with recognition wanting to be recognized wanting to be liked wanting to be appreciated comes from a place of ego and so even they have fallen even they have fallen i'm hearing it's not the recognition what what for those of you who are stuck in the matrix and paradigm and paradox i'm hearing just like myself cristalina by the way um, the matrix and the illusion of the internet, the illusion of Instagram, the illusion of WhatsApp, the illusion of social media. Don't do what you're doing on those platforms to be liked and to be recognised and to have to have appreciation because it's a false appreciation. Now the devil works very well with illusions, doesn't he? Okay, whether you believe in the devil or not, it's the energy of that low vibration. And that energy is the AI. Okay, so a lot of these platforms are com completely governed, are under the governance of AI. 
which is illusion, which is which is the insult of God. It's not human, is what I'm saying. It's not humanity. It's not human. It's not even animal. We are animals. Yeah. So it's it's artificial. AI is artificial intelligence. So that's also important. So that's just another reminder as well that what goes on online seems like the truth. Seems like a true reflection. Seems like a mirror, but it's it's not. And so the devil also was very good at hiding, very good with illusions, a false light. OK, so what is the combining energy between both divine and oh, sorry? No. What what does the divine masculine want to say to the divine feminine? Please, spirit. What does the divine masculine want to say? Jesus, what does the divine masculine want to say to the divine feminine? That he is overseeing he and his energies in other divine masculine types. So Jesus um, and other archetypes of the divine masculine masters are overseeing the masculines at this time okay also the back the back of these cards is all green as well so beautiful energy of the heart five of air we have the five of swords and we have a woman a ballet dancer who's um balanced on string here with doves around her okay Okay, so the Five of Swords, we have this energy of a little bit of conflict, potentially, that they may have experienced or challenges. Okay, so they want to communicate. We have our energy, which is swords, communication. That they're doing what it takes. They're doing everything that it, it takes to um, to come in and communicate here, regardless of the challenges. They're, they're, they're staying gracefully on top, I'm seeing here. We also have the nine of fire. They're working very hard on their goals. They're almost completing um, a project or a cycle in their life as well. And or both here with the nine of air, nine of fire. They, they have a lot of uh, responsibilities at this time. OK. Um, and we have the two of air and the eight of fire. So we have air and fire here both. OK, so we have this energy of um you know, maybe it's not quite the right time to communicate. So they're, they're sort of working out the right time to communicate. And we have the eight of fire, which is, you know, continuing to work on self practice, self work. OK, so let's have a look briefly at these energies. We have five, nine, two, eight could be significant. Number nine is, again, a number that um, is coming through here a lot. And number six as well. Um, five and two adds up to seven and nine and eight is um, 17, which adds up to eight. So. Let's just have a look at the numbers, you know, forget this. Let's have a look at the numbers. So number five is the force of change, innovation and dynamics within a group flexibility and the potential for necessary chaos influenced by element um, air. So can can be good. Exploring new options before regrouping can help me refine what I'm co-creating and make it the best it can be. So what they want to communicate is they're doing the best that they can do and be at this time. And um, they're working on it. They're working on coming through with communication, coming through with truths. And what they want to say is that they have more of an understanding and appreciation of this connection. They have a global awareness as well, um, that it's not just uh, an insular experience, a twin flame energy and experiences um, experience with many other people who are on the path. So they have an understanding of what that means, the twin flame energy. Um, also, they accept that they co-created in this experience as well, um, whether you are in separation or in union um, and that they are becoming better versions of themselves as well. They're being more as pillars of their society and their their community. And they know that they're not alone. And as as and they are also there for others as well. So they're being really compassionate and being really um, altruistic as well at this time, I would say. Uh, with number two, there's this energy of collaboration. So they're wanting to communicate and say they want to work with you. They want to collaborate with you on something. And um, 
yeah, they want something new to take place um, between both of you. And they want new communications, uh, a portal of communication opening up. They want to make that happen. And they also want to say, I've come far and can trust myself in stepping forward into new territory. The past no longer determines my future, for I'm fearlessly going forth with spirit at my side. I'm truly ready for change. OK, that's also what they want to say. Uh, divine feminines. What do you want to say, divine feminines? What do the divine feminines want? What do the divine, divine feminines want to say and hear? Okay, because they are on the recipient energy. Divine feminines. Thank you, spirit. So, divine feminines, we have the two of earth, the two of pentacles, and we have the sun. So two cards, they mean so much. So we have number 19 here and number two. Again, we have two. So they want to also collaborate. They also want to collaborate. Or they also want to work um, with a divine masculine. And they also want this great, new, exciting change. They want a reconciliation. They want um, happy times. They want harmony between you both. They want a healthy relationship, essentially. They want a fresh new start with the sun energy. Now, the sun is strong Leo energy. Um, there's also this this message here of they're also working on their finances. They're working on their career as well. They're kind of uh, multitasking, possibly with the two of pentacles. Um, I think at this point, um, both counterparts are at a point where an understanding that they don't necessarily need to be with each other. But it's more about it would be nice if they were together in the physical, you know. Let's have a look at the sun here. Let's have a look at the two of... No, let's have a look at the sun. Yeah, number 19. Which rounds down to a 10. Okay, so they want a fresh new start. So the energy of abundance, again, so the Divine Feminine is in, a, in, in her prosperity stage. Um, there's also this energy of pregnancy potentially too. And we have the sun, which is very strongly being shared here. Um in this reading okay they want truth they want the truth the divine feminine wants the truth okay in her face <laughs> at this time everything is possible and everything i need to know is illum illuminated uh, projects come to fruition relationships flourish and my growth is assured this is a time of plenty it's important that i share this abundance with others i'm deeply grateful we have this energy of abundance here now i'm going to get some other messages um as well So, messages from your love. So, divine masculines. What do divine masculines want to say? Okay. We have the five of cups. I tried. I or five of hearts. Okay. Yeah. I've tr I tried. I really tried to make it work. I gave and I gave, but maybe that's a problem. Love sucks. Everyone is out to get me. So that's the energy of victimhood that they're leaving behind. And they gave to a relationship before. They gave to a situation before that just wasn't reciprocal. And they were kind of. Yeah, they had a really negative feeling about love. Oh, you make me feel amazing. We have the page of wands. OK, so we have great passion and fantasizing. OK, so that's that's what the divine masculine wants to say to the divine feminine. Any any others? OK, so we also have divine masculine wanting to say eight of wands. So they want communication. They also want to travel. Surprise. They want, to surprise, they want to surprise you with something or even a surprise visit. Surprise, unblock me. So if you've blocked them, maybe unblock them. Surprise, unblock me because I'm going to bombard you with love and text messages. Let's have sex on the beach. Let's travel together. Okay, that's another one. We have the seven of wands. Okay, so I need to protect myself, it says here. I need to protect myself. I don't trust anyone right now. Please don't rush me. I'm just not ready. So at this time, they're probably not quite ready to communicate. They don't want to be rushed. They don't want you to communicate to them. 
um they honor the fact that you're respecting their space although they're very very strongly on the brink of communicating i feel like it's going to be a sudden communication um and a surprising visit or surprising communication um they've also been working on protecting their energies as well we have the ace of cups so we they want a new start in the relationship they want new love the energy of new love and romance and they're also finding true love within themselves as i mentioned before so they're on a good cycle here a good good path i want to love you i want to start loving you i want to open my heart with you let's start fresh okay beautiful and we have number seven of swords which is i'd rather i'd rather pretend and sneak off whenever i feel ha huh, feel feelings are dumb so before they were numb with feelings and now their feelings have really crept up on them and they're realizing that actually they're wanting to again repair this illusion repair the veil that um you know they want to they want to release this feeling if they've given you that feeling that they've been pretending that they don't have any feelings for you or they've been pretending they want to be clear and true and divine feminines are wanting that truth they're wanting that clarity they're wanting that transparency and they're, they're wanting to give the divine feminine that truth but then they're no longer pretending anymore we have the six of cups because they've emotionally matured we have the six of cups here they're wanting to come back from the past they're feeling the soulmate energy between you both um it says here i recognize you i know you i have felt you you are a long lost friend you feel like family to me and you feel like home so that's all i want to say to the divine feminines and we have divine masculine saying the queen of the queen of pentacles energy i deserve all of the finest things in the world um i deserve a stable love and happy life i would make a happy wife let's build a home and plant roots so i feel like we're actually already now in the divine feminine's energy where the divine masculine is seeing the divine feminine's worth and they're actually they may even now start to actually truly believe that the divine feminine is the one for them and that they want to be married to them they want a high level commitment with the divine feminine and they've been putting in the work um personally emotionally physically spiritually in their career whatever it's taken and whatever it takes in order to um not quite fit the dynamic for union but um more more so they want to be the best but the best versions of themselves for the divine ma for the divine feminine now for the divine feminine to the divine masculine we have the seven of pentacles okay which is interesting so we have this energy of the divine feminine saying I'm patiently waiting for you. It says here, I'm wishing for you to return. I'm growing and maturing, but I know long term what I want. And that's what the divine feminine is wanting to say to the divine masculine. We also have this card that kept came out. We have the king of wands. OK, so divine feminine recognizes um, and finds the divine masculine very attractive, uh, very magnetic, very authoritative, very um, in charge, very um you know just has this b big d energy you know boss energy this um energy of great respect as well and the divine feminine finds that highly attractive that they are autonomous and they are also in charge of their career or they are you know um in leadership uh, they find that very attractive um that they're not depending on anyone okay if anything they're they have dependence so divine feminine says you match me in every single way the passion and lust for you is something i can definitely handle as a partner to you let's commit our dreams together and fly high so again we have that energy of rising above the fray the divine feminine is seeing also this connection as above a cut above the rest as well so they're wanting the connection to fly high they want the connection to elevate so what else does Divine Feminine want to say to Divine Masculine? The Three of Cups, which is the Three of Hearts. OK, so we have this energy of celebration. I want to celebrate with you. Let's party. Let's go out of here. Let's get out of here. I'm about I'm done with other people feeling creative sparks flying. So the Divine, Divine Feminine is feeling really creative. She wants to go and dance. It's, there's this energy of let's dance. Let's party. Let's go out. Um, let's have a fun time. There's also recognition of friendship here with the three of hearts as well. OK, what else does Divine Feminine want to say 
to Divine Masculine, please, Mary Magdalene. Thank you. Do you want me to take this card too? Um, we have the Joker. Haha, <laughs> played again. When will you ever learn? So Divine Feminine has felt at one point in the connection, she wants to say that she felt played by the Divine Masculine. She she felt like she was duped by the Divine Masculine. She felt betrayed by the Divine Masculine. She felt, she felt and found it hard to um, actually, to be honest, to trust the Divine Masculine because there's immaturity here with the Joker. And we have the Ten of Cups here, the Ten of Hearts, this energy of, you know, happily ever after divine feminine is is really in her feminine energy where she felt the connection and she feels and still wants and desires um this long-term commitment she wants happiness she wants harmony she wants you know children if that's something that is something that she really desires um she wants a home she wants to travel with a divine masculine etc and it says here you are my everything you are my one and only true love and there's that song you're my everything you're my one and only on one and only we have number 10 and we have this energy of like she feels she feels the intentions of the divine masculine because remember we also had this energy of foresight so she feels the intention of my my masculine she feels that that's what divine masculine wants too um, and she wants to hear that. She wants to see that in the physical. OK. And the last card is we have the three of wands. OK. So she wants the divine masculine to say that she he's coming soon. So it says soon. I'm coming soon. It's not the right time, but soon. OK. And what is the overall energy between both? Okay, so the overall energy between both is the Six of Swords. They've both moved on. They've mo both moved on from each other. They've both moved on from difficult situations and painful endings. They both have maybe travelled. They've both relocated. They've both moved for work or they're mo moving for work. Um, and they've both, um, <coughs> excuse me, have felt trapped somehow. So I'm feeling trapped. I need to get away. It's not serving me anyway anymore. I've seen the light. I want out. And I have this um, Lenny Kravitz song in my head that's saying, I want to get away. I want to fly away. So again, this energy of flying and, and soaring and, and just elevating above from all of the BS, essentially. So the, the connection between both, again, is number six. 15, compassion, six, third eye chakra. And we have number six here. So the energy of balance is is what they're both wanting. They're both wanting to match each other as well at a high level because they're such high achievers, I have to say, um, in their career. Um, they're also wanting to to be a power couple, essentially, and just be at the same level. OK, and we have the five of swords. Let's see how I can get away with this. I've pl I have been playing others and so far you don't know. I lie to you often because I can't deal with feelings. It's more fun. So this is the energy that the divine masculine, divine feminine have moved away from. They've moved away from illusions. They've moved away from player energies. They've moved away from trickster energies, you know, in the past relationships in general, or even in the past connection with the divine mas with my masculine, divine feminine. And we're going to use one last card. We're going to be using the... Um, activation cards okay between both to close out the reading i hope you've enjoyed this reading it kind of has been here and there and everywhere but that's fine <laughs> okay that's totally fine that's just what happens sometimes you know you see you see the reading going in one direction and it goes in a different direction and that's just life and I feel like that's also something that's symbolic in this connection is um you may expect a rerouting in in the in the direction of this connection is what I'm hearing but it's it's gonna it's still gonna be on the right path it's just gonna be maybe slightly different from what you expect Wait, this is the wrong thing. No, this is right. <laughs> um, pay attention to the numbers as well that you're seeing too. It's another, it's another message for some of you. 
Okay, so if you'd like a private reading with me, you know where to find me. You can book directly. Um, okay, so let's just get one. Let's just get one card, one closing out card for the connection between both the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine Peace Spirit. Well, they want, okay, they want to. <laughs> okay. So we have compassion, right? So we have that. So what does the, thank you, spirit. Thank you so much. Is consciousness. We have number 17. Okay, number 17, consciousness, healing energy, the star energy. I mean, to be honest, I'm seeing people who are real power couples here. Uh, they are in leadership. They could have a strong public platform or even um, they are public figures in society in their career. So we have the energy of conscious consciousness and doing things in a conscientious way, having forgiveness and compassion uh, for another individual. Because remember, that other individual that you're dealing with um, it has also gone through scars and wounds and have had their own experiences in life. And you can't tell someone to go ahead and do something without permission either. But, you know, they will have their own way of seeing things. Remember, there's the energy of the sun and the moon, again, which is saying that you know, I'm a planet unto myself here, but they work beautifully well with each other, but still respecting each other's space. But there's still this beautiful dance and synergy between both. So the frequency of consciousness supports our ability to focus our attention on all the multidimensional aspects that show up so that we can include them in our reality. So whatever you're going through, whatever you're experiencing in your life, and your career, and you've got stuff going on or you've got baggage, it's about the energy of being conscientious between you both and to work work together, um, work in harmony no matter what is going on in your life, you know. If you felt that there, there could be restrictions or some sort, you know, you can move beyond and above those restrictions in the connection. The frequency of conscientious sorry, the frequency of consciousness supports our ability to focus our attention on all multidimensional aspects that show up so that we can include them in our reality. Consciousness can describe, consciousness can be described as a state of awareness or focused attention and wherever we direct our attention will dominate our minds. Like the universe, consciousness is alive, forever expanding, breathing, morphing. Consciousness reflects reality and Reality reflects consciousness in return. In this new energy, our consciousness is rapidly expanding to hold the awareness of the many multidimensional aspects of reality. We are increasingly capable of multi-directing our attention to many direct, many different layers at the same time, providing us with a deep, rich experience in every moment. We no longer receive input slowly through the sense we no longer receive input solely through the senses that are closely connected to our physical body alone. We receive communication from beyond the body through intuitive thought, intuitive knowing and intuitive feeling. Light and consciousness are closely connected. They both have quantum attributes and are non-linear. Light is an energy that can be created through consciousness and consciousness can create light in return. Light influences our awareness, our perception, our consciousness and therefore our reality. The centre of consciousness image shows the place of birth where light bursts out of the core to spread. Out of the core to spread into the various planes of reality. The bright purple indicates the connection to source and the yellow spheres refer to our sense of self emerging from source and expanding onto the flower of life grid, the basis for our three dimensional reality. The blue in the image refers to the deep dark universe, the origin of everything that shows up in our reality. But since everything is always in motion, so is consciousness, like a breath morphing, changing, expanding, and the colour could easily flow from blue into purple, into red, into yellow, and so on. Take a moment to go inside and mentally scan your body. Notice the physical sensations you feel. Tune into your heart and how do you feel emotionally? Now move your awareness away from your body. Can you feel the space around your body? Practice moving your awareness from what goes on inside of you and what's going on around you. 
so both of you are feeling um more conscious about the environment around you the energies around you the downloads you're experiencing and receiving from your other half as well let's have a look at some other minology cards for the connections one card so one card for the connection between both and it is adjustments are required third quarter moon okay so there are current adjustments that are ex being experienced between both of you okay so i'm going to get the book for that So the third quarter moon, so there are some adjustments. It's not quite the right time for union because there are adjustments taking place in the connection. OK, so here's the card here. Think of yourself as a vessel that has been filled more and more over the past few weeks. Some of what has come your way may have been wonderful, but there is also a lot of negativity and you need to let go of this. Whatever situation you're asking about now, be honest about whether there are toxic emotions involved, which you need to release into the ethers. This card is also come this card also comes with a promise that all is not lost however there are changes or adjustments required before you will get to where you want to be a change of course is forecast now that recent events have been understood and acted upon uh, there may also be a crisis now which will remind you what you want and what is it's time to let go of so pay attention okay um Something new and exciting is around the corner. Trust may be required to move the situation forwards and your life may be out of balance and this may be causing your issues. It may be time to hatch a, ho a whole new plan. Now, I also just saw 31 and 31 on the timer as well. And I'm going to get one more deck. And the last deck is the last deck is the romance angels. OK, so let's just have a look at the romance angels as well thank you spirit thank you so much for being here okay if you don't already please follow abstract medicine on instagram as well also a message here about organization so some of you um are also needing to organize a few things like get your ducks in a row i'm hearing so that could also be significant too for some of you so please spirit a few lasting messages for the collective thank you so much for the twin flame journey thank you so much yes okay so there's a heart-to-heart -heart conversation that's going to be taking place at some point soon okay so honestly discuss your feelings with each other so that's important here in the connection and we have express love so expression of love is coming through as well so express love there is an expression of love coming through as well. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. I also feel like this is something that is going to be taking place. And we have one more card, which is reconciliation. So beautiful card to end the whole reading. Someone from your new part, from someone from your past is returning to your life because there's a kindred spirit energy between you both, a recognition. So I hope you've enjoyed this reading. Please check other videos here on Abstract Medicine on YouTube and also on Abstract Medicine on Instagram too. If you would like to put, book your private reading with me, you can do that directly on the website. Just go ahead and book, uh, pay for the reading, uh, send me a question and I will read the reading for you just like this as a recorded video, actually more so over my tarot table. And I record the video and I send it directly into your inbox. If you would like a shamanic healing session with me, this is actually done more like this, um, but it's live. 
so we book a, a, a date for you a day it doesn't matter time zones I have clients from all over the world and I do a shamanic light body energy healing on your body energetically and remotely we also look at the tarot as well afterwards as well um, I'm also implementing a little bit of astro cartography as well so places where you could and potentially live or work in um in consideration with your natal astrological chart too so if you're interested in that please send me a message or an email or a dm thank you so much thank you jesus and thank you mother mary and mary magdalene thank you jesus and mary magdalene for this wonderful channeling for the collective today thank you so much i hope and pray that the messages have been received by all of you well and in your hearts and with light and love thank you so much god bless bye for now